Hello, my continue video. We can take now a look at all of the move changes. I put all of them into my own version of PE Poke on my PC. So everything is in there. We can take a look on how things change. And I can tell you there are changes in there that you wouldn't expect. And you're gonna take a look at it later. But here, real quick, I want to say something about the move changes here. They didn't go into the specific thing here. So what I did is for Zepkin, it's now 50% chance to lower because it says it's not, no longer guaranteed, but it's still available. So I paid 50%. For Icicle Spear, energy cost got increased. I did from 35, which it is right now in the game, to 40. All out, I gave it one less energy, could be two less energy, I don't know, one less energy makes it around like four point-ish um, energy per turn, which I think is normal, I think it's only one downgrade most likely. I changed all of those, I don't know why they didn't change Omni as Wind, by the way, also what I realized, it wasn't 40 before, it was 45 for them, but I guess they don't know their own game. And we see Quick Attack here, I gave him one more energy and I gave Tackle one more energy. And this is more important than you would think. I'm going to take a look at this later, but here I did real quick on my own PE poke a calculation about the current um, rankings. I wouldn't take them for granted because um, those are usually not as good as the one that uh, PE poke itself does. Um, those are something that you can do, always do, but here are all the changes in there. For example, Psychic Fang Steelix here with Crunch, actually, maybe I should change it later on as well. But still with Earthquake, has a pretty high ranking here. Other changes that you would see here, I don't really see anything. Quick Attack Diggersby looks interesting. Licky Tongue still with Lick and Array, I don't know what it has then, but otherwise. Um, but otherwise you don't really see that many changes. You see the Richie Steel way lower, you see Double way higher. And we can take a look now at the changes that we can uh, do here in general. You will see like all the time those pretty full pages of PE Poke with the different kind of movesets. Here we have, for example, the Nido Arena, the Nido Reno, the Nido King, and we can take a look at those. Um, you see always the moveset, I don't really want to talk too much about it because otherwise a video is going to be like 40 minutes long. So we can go straight into it. Nido Arena gets Thunderbolt, Nido Reno gets Ice Beam, and the Nido King gets Double Kick. For those, it doesn't really matter too much. Nido Reno gonna pick up the match up against Altaria because Ice Beam, of course, is double super effective. The Nido King doesn't really want this move at all. Wins now against Licky Tongue, but otherwise it doesn't really help him. So this is most likely all useless move updates. Next up, going to be a little bit more interesting. You have Arcanine here, which is now going to have access to Psychic Fangs. What this means is I don't think that Fire that uh, Snarl is going to be the go-to fast move anymore. I think it's going to be Fire Fang. Fire Fang going to do so much more damage than the Snarl, adding this to together with the um, Psychic Fang's debuff chance, like the 100% debuff from Psychic Fang's, it's basically a clone of Poison Fang, um, then you will be able to do a lot of damage with Fire Fang over time. Same here, we have the uh, Tentacruel now with Scald, we have the Rapidash now with Fairy Wind, every single move uh, change update is by the way in this video now. And we will see here, of course, Arcanine. Look at how good Arcanine looks right now. We'll be able to win against Warrain, um, Registeel, Trevenant, the main Koi, and Slicky Tongue. You just win him after a while against the Azumarill here because you have Wild Charge as well. You're going to be able to deal nice damage as well to like flying types like Mandibus. This Pokemon looks like such a cool upgrade. Next up we see like the Rapidash kind of got a little bit of an upgrade as it seems like that the Psycho Cut is not as good as the Fairy type version of it. So um, wins now against Mandibus. Doesn't really look to be the craziest match up there anyway because Rapidash isn't the best but I, I mainly also going to talk, talk only about the Great League. There are some Master League stuff going on later on but we can take a look at this later. Next up, we're going to have uh, the Haunter here with Ice Punch, the Meteorek, the normal version with a Rock Slide, before it only had Earthquake, as you can see here, it didn't really have coverage. Hitmonlee has Double Kick, and we can take a look at this real quick. We see here that the Meteorek didn't change, I was really hoping that it would make this Pokemon better, but it seems like it does nothing for it. The Haunter, now going to be able to win some matchups against Altaria and Nidoqueen, which is pretty nice, because you will be able to hit them with super effective moves, while still then now losing against Azumarill, because you don't have Sludge Bomb anymore. And the Hitmonlee going to be able to win against those Steel types now, finally, you are a fighter, you should win against those. Like the Licky Tongue, like the Galarian Stunfisk, like the Erechi Steel, or also the Bastion and the Diggersby. Very good here. Next up, we're going to have the v Weezing. The Weezing now going to be able to have Tackle. Tackle got buffed. What I did for Tackle gave it one more um, energy gain. It's a one turn move anyway. It went from two to three. Basically, has the same energy gain now as, for example, Dragon Breath, which is pretty decent actually for Tackle. I think it has less damage. 
No, it's actually also three damage. It's basically a water gun clone now, Tackle. But it's actually a pretty decent. Tackle is not a bad move anymore. Like, don't underestimate Tackle. Um, we have Fairy Wind nowadays, which is at least stab and gives more energy generation but less damage. We also changed the moveset to Overheat and Play Rough instead of Sludge and Play Rough because Overheat gonna give you coverage against Steel types. Before you wouldn't be able to really reach Overheat, that's why Sludge was there the better move, but now definitely I think Overheat gonna be the better move. Dragonair going to have access now to Body Slam instead of the Return, which you kinda wanted to have before, we had to purify it first. Dragon Knight going to have access to a superpower, which makes it way better against Steel types. You're going to take a look at this later on as well in the Master League. But we will see here, for example, that Dragon Knight now going to be able to do still way more damage against stuff like Scrafty or the Stunfist. Even in the open Great League, this thing looks pretty decent. The Dragon Knight earns a match up against Swampert, and that's basically it. Otherwise, it doesn't really help it. Um, and the Galarian Weezing going to win way more matchups here, especially with the overheat going even be able to KO the Skarmory in this calculation, and that's kind of funny. Um, also has now better access to KO something like the Medicham, which is nice and should be a pretty neutral Pokemon in general. Looks to be like a very good lead, for example, where basically everything doesn't really want to take either the um, play rough or the overheat. Next up, we're going to have Ledian going and getting access to Dynamic Punch. We have the Lantern getting access to Surf, and we have the Fairy Wind on the Jump Love. Taking a look at this right now, we're going to see that the Ledian only gets the matchup against the Diggersby now. Otherwise, it stays the same. But I think it's still, uh, but definitely a valuable met uh, like in general game there instead of the um, Aerial Ace. I would say you could also, of course, get rid of the. Bug Buzz, but I guess Aerial Ace is a little bit weaker. It really depends on the situation and what you want to play, but now you have at least access to hit something like a Steel type, which comes in if you farm on something else, which you have like hard locked down. I think that's a really good move. As we see the Lantern going to be most likely one of the best Pokemon now in the meta. Being able to get to a Surf now, having access to this way faster move, way better move for it, going to make it so much better as you can see as well picking up a lot of more matchups and we see the jump love actually being able to pick up one matchup against the many champ as you do not super effective damage with your fast move already but for that they lose against the wish cares interesting not really something that most likely going to happen in real life but I don't know. And they, I actually don't know how they lose against it. Like, you one shot it anyway. That must be kind of a uh, bug. And we see the Sableye also going down now. I guess Jump Love is actually way better now with the new move. I didn't really expect this, but Fairy Wind gives it more energy and also gives it more damage against stuff that you really want to get damage against. So I think that's a cool update as well. Next up, Espion with the Psychic Fangs. Espion with Psychic Fangs and also the Girafferic, which is kind of interesting as uh, I didn't give the Girafferic the fast move because I don't think it's really smart. It also would learn double kick here, but I don't think it really helps him. The rollout now is of course a little bit weaker on Dunsparce than what you saw in the video prior, where I thought that Dunsparce would need rollout and now has rollout, as we can take a look at this now. Psychic Fangs on Girafferic might be good in certain metas. Here right now you see Espion actually going to pick up some wins now. Still not making it good, but might make it good for the um, upcoming Psychic Cup. I think that's going to be very interesting. And here for the Girafferic going to pick up way more matchups with the Psychic Fangs. Going to be very nice as well in certain metas where, for example, Steel types are not allowed, like the Retro Cup, which is sadly not available this time around, but most likely next time when the next season comes around. Dunspells wins matchups match up now against something like the Altaria, the Arachnid, or the Manibus. Also, just in general, it's way, way more consistent. This Pokemon now has access to just such a good fast move that it can spam the very good charge moves it has and has a very neutral, decent-ish stats. Next up, we're going to have the Steelix having access to the Psychic Fangs. Now, I kind of want to change it to Crunch here, to be honest, because it said in the beginning Crunch would be better. We have the Mobile with now Fairy Wind, where we have to go for Double Nuke, of course. We have the Manetric, which we basically have the same situation that we have with the Arcanine. We kind of want to go now not for Snarl anymore, but for Thunder Fang as it stab and does more damage and benefits way more from the Psychic Fangs than compared to the other thing. You might want to run rather the um, Wild Charge instead of the Overheat, but I think you already have some nice damage with the Thunder Fang plus the 
um, Psychic Fangs, but this really depends on what you want to run here. There are no perfect moves that as we can calculate this thing now and see that the Steelix going to win no matchup now against Mandibus, but other than this, it doesn't really look too crazy. I still think that the Earthquake might be a little bit better. More while going to be able to win actually a little bit more matchups. It's a little bit of a weirder matchup because usually you were like a half fire type with it, which of course now is not the case anymore. And Manectric looks really cool as well. I think that's Pokemon going to be very interesting in certain metas where you don't really have a lot of ground types, for example, around or stuff that just is very good against it. Here, for example, you have G Fisk and Swampart. What do you want to do against that? You have Nido Queen, which actually going to be one of the winners. Tomorrow, I'm going to make most likely a video about. Uh, how the meta gonna change the winners and the losers maybe top 10 for both and um we will see how this is going to be as we see the next one here we have incinerate camera having access to earth power and overheat make this thing basically something that always gets a shield we have Lopany here, which has now double kick. This is actually a Pokemon I'm way more excited than you might think. It has pretty decent stats, as you can see here. 2036 overall is pretty decent. And we have this Rubert at the end here, which has no access to Psychic Fangs as well, giving Confusion and Air Slash way more damage. I think Confusion is the way to go. As you can see here as well, the Lopany actually picks up so many wins against, for example, the Warrain, even against the Trevenant, which is interesting because you have access to Fire Punch and you resist the um, Shadow Claw damage. You're going to be able to beat all of those normal types and steel types and rock types up with this thing and it's kind of interesting that you even win against the Skarmory here which is funny because of uh you're know, like a fighting type oh you actually you are just normal i think it just gets the fighting type with the mega evolution yeah, exactly that's why Next up, we're going to have another one here with some fairies. We have the Flodges having access to Fairy Wind now, where I put also the yeah, Psychic on it. We have the Slurpuff, which is going to be one of my most anticipated being good Pokemon because it has Fairy Wind plus Flamethrower, which means that you can threaten some Pokemon, like for example, a Reggie's there coming in, but you also have Energy Ball. So I think maybe Energy Ball might be even better here as well just because it gives you more coverage. And then we have the double kick Incineroar at the end, which doesn't really benefit too much from it, I think. I mean, it wins a little bit more. The Slurper wins now actually against Registeel, which is insane. That's really cool. You can win against Registeel with this Pokemon. That's funny. You win against Azumarill, you win against Wishkes with the uh, um, extra coverage. Slurper really gains something from this. Unlike the um, Flodgers, which doesn't really want to have the extra new move there. But this looks really cool. Let me change Incineroar real quick to Flame Charge. Maybe this helps a little bit more. We have to see here. We see the Incineroar now going to change. And this makes it worse. So we go next to the next Pokemon where I'm really excited for. I'm actually excited for all of those three. Shadow Claw and Galissapod. Going to be amazing. What else of charge moves that it has? It has only Aqua Tail and uh, Aqua Jet and the Aerial Ace and Ixtasa. Horrible charge moves, but now one of the best fast moves. You have the Double, which has access to Tackle, which got boosted, and also the Double Kick, which got boosted. So both of them makes it better. And the best thing as well is, I already have a Double build, so I can just use it immediately. But we also have the Rune Regis, which now has access to Shadow Claw, which you definitely should try to play with the Sand Tomb instead of the Rock Tomb, which was the moveset prior. And we can calculate this as well real quick, as we're going to see now that this is going to be very interesting. The Dub Wall here actually might want to run Tackle. I think Tackle Dub Wall might be better if it actually generates three energy, which I think it has to because everything is e like even numbers or like in general, like normal numbers, not like dot numbers i don't know what's called in english to be honest um in the code right now so it might be even better than double kick but double kick looks also really interesting i think double going to be one of the coolest pokemon that's coming in there having access to tackle plus body slam is very cool so that's very nice aruna riga is going to be able to actually beat so many things in the meta funny that this thing beats swampert which doesn't really make too much sense i guess you have to bait first and then go for hey then you go for shadow ball i don't know it's crazy because you're actually ground type. The cool thing is you can run Rune Regis together with the Kofak Regis. So you can basically play both of them, which is funny. And you see here, like, it's just in general, it's just so much better. The Golisopod actually doesn't look as good here, but I think it's going to be very cool in the Ultra League. And we can take a look now at some Master League stuff. We have the Nihiligo here with the Poison Jab. We have the Flourish again with Fairy Wind. And we also have the Dragonite in here with the Superpower. And we will see here 
that the Dragon Knight going to do some pretty nice damage now against stuff like the Alga. You're going to be able to maybe one-shot it as well if you get the shield there. Especially now you're going to also don't really have the hardest answers to Dragon Knight other than fairy types anymore. Even a Melmetal doesn't want to take a superpower, I think. And this is going to be amazing in general. This Dragon Knight, the new Dragon Knight set going to make it so much more fun, but also a little bit more scary for like fairy types because like you don't have Hurricane to hit them. But like Dragonite now going to be able to threaten those steel types is very cool. Flodges wins a little bit more with the new fast move, at least in the Master League, it seems like. And also the Nihil Lego wins a lot more, of course, because Acid is horrible and Poison Jab is one of the best fast moves. Going to be able now to have an uh, answer for the uh, ho which is cool, but also for all the fairy types, for example, the Zacian, which is amazing, or the Token Cus, which cannot do anything, going to be very cool. I'm really looking forward to Nihiligo. But there's one more thing that I really want to take a look at. And there's one Pokemon that nobody expected, which would be amazing now. And this one is Xerneas. Xerneas and Virzian both got an upgrade. Quick Attack, I also put Quick Attack plus one because I think that's the lowest I can go, do, go anyway. And Tackle plus one, Tackle one turn move. Basically now an, um, what's called Water Gun clone. Of course it's not Step, of course it's a Fairy type. But look at the stats of Xerneas, it's pretty pretty bulky, it's pretty pretty cool. And this thing completely claps everything. I actually didn't expect it whatsoever, but Xerneas now seems to be one of the best Pokemon that you can run. Imagine the backline Xerneas plus um, the Zacian. I don't know, like this is going to be definitely crazy meta if Tackle actually gets this one plus energy buff. I didn't expect this whatsoever before it was horrible. Now it seems like being one of the craziest meta Pokemon. Insane. Other things here. Some are great league stuff for the other updated moves or quick attack and tackle. You see here, for example, we have Diggersby having Mudshot or Diggersby having quick attack. We have Munchlix having Lick or rather the Step Tackle, which does exactly the same damage, I think, as well. And also um, is, yeah, just like gets the same energy. So while I think the tackle might be cool in Munchlix, of course, you kind of want to have Lick damage there for those psychic types that you kind of want to answer. But if you don't get them in, tackle will be just better. And Greedent also would learn Tackle, but as you can see here, it's not better really. It's some matchups is actually better, for example, for like um, stuff like Nidoqueen here, which is interesting. But uh, it just kind of hit or miss. For Munchlix, it actually seems to be way better. And for the Digger Speed, some matchups, for example, Swampert here, actually going to be better for the Quick Attack, as Quick Attack just does more damage in general. So there might be more different kind of variants that you can play with Diggersby and other Pokemon in this new meta because you just have like new moves that can do a little bit more damage, a little bit more energy there. And it's going to be a lot of fun to experience all the new um, season there. And yeah, that's going to be it for the video. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Tomorrow will be the final normal team review for this last season. And also most likely a meta analysis for this new uh, update. And then the day after we have the new season where I'm mostly going to make like a video about like the best teams again. Stay tuned for this. I can't wait for it. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.